So everybody no. ready? Come on, let me find you here. There you are. Okay. Smile, smile there, Dan. There you go. There you go. Smile. Okay. You're running. Smile. It? This this thing has an amazing uh, zoom. Yeah. All right. Okay. Tonight uh, we're going to cover. These doggies don't drive me nuts. We're going to cover uh, perspective and foreshortening. Um, next week we're going to talk about uh, edge and line, and then the following week we're going to get into the details of face, hands, and feet. Uh, I'm going to mention uh, edge a little bit tonight to combine it with foreshortening, but I really want to spend the whole night on foreshortening and perspective because it's extremely important and it's the hardest thing that, that artists can learn to do. Okay, uh, again another visual aid, there's, in terms of perspective, uh, perspective was essentially discovered by uh, Brunelleschi who was an Italian architect in 14 AD, so this has been around for a long time. The idea of perspective is that objects as they recede in space uh, uh, have to follow a certain uh, construct. And the construct is, uh, I'm showing you three types of perspective. You have uh, one vanishing point, uh, two vanishing points, and three vanishing points. Now the idea is that at eye level, if I look out to infinity, uh, that would be uh, the horizon uh, that the vanishing points would line. That would be essentially a, 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 on the same level as my eye level, but it's out at infinity. And uh, what I'm showing you here in the two point, which is the most common uh, ver uh, version of uh, perspective, is uh, essentially a box. And you can actually see there's two sides of the box, and as you recede in space, the box, uh, even though it would be, uh, this side would be a square, it was like I'm showing you here, it was basically facing you. As it recedes in space, the back side gets smaller than the front side, and the same thing for the top and for the other side. This is two-point perspective. I'm going to come back to this in a second, but let's go to one-point perspective. That would be the case uh, if you're looking down a hallway, uh, if this were a tunnel or a railroad track, basically, and I'm looking, again, this would be my eye level, and this is the horizon uh, out at infinity. And again, uh, I'm, again, all the, uh, the uh, perspective lines actually uh, vanish at one point. And again, if I rotated this to the side, I'd end up, again, with this situation, which is the two-point perspective, where I actually can see more than one side of the box. So the rarest of the three is the three vanishing points. And that only occurs when you have a tall building. You're either at the bottom looking up or the top looking down. And essentially, you have the same situation as two vanishing points, but in addition, because this building is very tall and you're looking up at it, you've got a third vanishing point out at infinity. And what I'm showing you here is that this is not, uh, as, you, as you go up the uh, building, it's not uh, vertical, it's not 90 degrees, it's actually leaning in. And as you go up further and further and further, essentially, again, it'll all merge at a, at a point in space. Okay, now, how do I connect this with foreshortening? Okay, when we're doing figure drawing, the human figure, you're going to have a shallow depth of field. That is, you're not going to have, you're not going to be looking out at a, at a vista. Uh, you're going to have something with a fairly shallow depth of field. And what I'm showing you here is, because we've been using circles and ellipses, uh, that if I had a box and the, the end of the box was right in, right in my uh, uh, view, it was directly at me, I could uh, inscribe a circle in it by hitting the, the tangent points and connecting them. Now, the minute I put that box uh, uh, into perspective in that part of it, one side of it's receding, the circle now turns into an ellipse. And the center of the circle, actually, you can see, and, and I'll show this more in a demonstration after the big break, that the circle is actually lopsided. The ellipse is essentially lopsided. The center of the ellipse. Uh, one side of it is, is going to be, you're going to get more information on this side than on the other side. And again, if you remember what we talked about last week for the for a face turning uh, and three quarters view, that part of the face, the part receding was actually uh, uh, being foreshortened, so it was less, uh, you saw less of this part of the face than the other part of my face. But I'll do, like I said, I'm going to do a full demonstration for you. Okay, now. There's another type of perspective that we're not going to talk about here, and that's atmospheric perspective. It's an entirely different thing. It has to do, uh, it's used in landscape painting, and it has to do with atm atmospheric effects. And the idea is that because we have an atmosphere, and the atmosphere has dust in it, and uh, water vapor, 
as you look out further and further, like if I look at distant mountains, uh, darks that are in the foreground, as you move them further and further back, say to this mountain, those darks will become uh, lighter, and they'll become uh, lighter in value much faster than the lights, say in the foreground, become darker. And everything ends in a basically a mid-gray uh, in, in, the, in the far background. And that mid-gray usually uh, in painting will be a bluish gray or a purplish gray. Now, why is it a bluish gray? Okay, that has to do with the, it has to do with reflected light from the sky and the whole idea of why, this, why, why the sky is blue. The sky is blue because of nitrogen absorbing white light and then re-emitting uh, blue light. Um, but we're not going to deal with that, but that's the other form of perspective that you can hear about, which is atmospheric, atmospheric perspective. Okay, so... Uh, let me, uh, again, just give you some quick examples of the first aspect of perspective, and that is, again, uh, we're going to take the perspective that we just talked about The idea that I try to try to stress with perspective is that as objects recede in space, and I just got like a string of pearls, they get smaller. And again, I, you can imagine this is just a string of pearls. So again, this relates to what we're going to do with figure drawing, but the, when perspective was first discovered uh, right at the beginning of the Italian Renaissance, it, it really had to do with, again, it was from an architect and had to do with buildings. But it essentially is, uh, we use it in, uh, in basically figure drawing uh, in that we, the shapes that are further away from us have to be smaller than the ones that are closest to us. For instance, if I do this, this is a famous uh, pose from a Caravaggio painting called the separate Emmaus, where one of the apostles has his hand out in one direction, right at, your, right at your eye level, and the other hand is receding. This hand has to look much, much bigger than my back hand. My arm, as it comes out, has to be bigger than my arm that's receding. Again, it's the same idea that I just showed you with the two-point perspective. So, suppose, I mean, I could actually do this here. I could, I could actually just convert this quickly to an arm and a hand, and this would back be a back arm, and... Again, I could uh, make, the idea is that the arm that's uh, coming towards me would have to be bigger than the arm that's receding. All right, let me give you an example, a painting example where I have extreme foreshortening in it. Okay. This is the same game. The hand that's coming out, this whole arm that comes out, this, this hand has to be bigger than, uh, basically, you can see the, sort of the feet in the background. And if I was standing and looking right at you, my feet would definitely be bigger than my hands. But because of the foreshortening this, the feet have to be small. And as I go back, each shape is, uh, is basically compressed and overlapping with the shape in front of it, but it's, it's getting smaller as I go further and further back. Um, there's another couple of the tricks in here that we'll cover during the, uh, after the big break which have to do with value and edge. To get things to come forward and help the perspective read uh, more as a three-dimensional uh, form coming towards you, I've actually put a hard edge here, uh, which hard edges always come forward. I've also put the lightest lights, so the biggest value contrast between the lightest light and the dark, very dark dark in this area. Again, lights always come forward rel relative to darks, which we see. But the big thing about this particular example is that the forms in front are much larger and they, they basically progressively get smaller as I go back in space. You can okay. really see it on the leg that's through yeah. the, the thing there. The leg is actually about the size of the arm. Right. That's right. So Dan, there's there's no rule for this. This is just something you have to develop a feel for, right? It's, it's basically, why I showed you the linear perspective first is that it, it evolves from linear perspective. I could have basically drawn all these forms as rectangles and squares rather than circles and ovals. And essentially going through all the, well, everything that I showed you with linear perspective, two-point linear perspective in terms of things receding in space, and done you know incredible detail of math and you know and actually put math in there. 
But that's not the point. The point is you can, you can you know, bypass all that by focusing in on the shapes again. You've got to get the shapes right. Even though you don't think they, you know, the, the, it, the, you look at the, the shapes as being abs in an abstract sense. You don't try to connect with the, with the human figure. You try to put down the abstract shape that you see one shape at a time to get the, uh, to make the perspective uh, read as uh, receding in space. If you, if you try to overanalyze it, you're going to do it wrong. Because the left side of your brain is going to tell you that what you're seeing is, is not correct, and it's going to correct you, and it's going to give you the wrong answer. So that's why we do this quick stuff, because I don't want you to think. I want you to put it down as fast, what you see, put it down as fast as possible. Okay, cut it.